All right, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, based on the part of the world you're watching this webcast from. My name is Sajid, and I'll be your host for today's webcast. A very warm welcome to everyone for participating in today's live webcast on Cloud Security for SD-WAN Best Practices for Branch Office Transformation. But before we get started, let's cover some logistics. We love your questions, comments, suggestions, and feedback. So please type your questions in the chat box and the Q&A panel. We'll compile them and address them during the end of the session. If you face any technical difficulties, like slides are not advancing, uh, please write to us at webcast at zscaler.com. I'll repeat, it's webcast at zscaler.com. Finally, I encourage everyone to participate in a short survey at the end of the session just to let us know how we did. Uh, we take these suggestions very seriously to improve the productions of these webinars and webcasts for you. Let's move on. I'm very excited to introduce our keynote speakers for today's webcast, um, Ramesh Prabhakaran. Ramesh is Vice President of Product Management at Webtela. He plays a critical role in the network architecture of cloud, uh, I'm sorry, for global enterprises and tier one service providers. Ramesh brings over two decades of experience in this webinar to talk about latest trends in the networking industry and why SD-WAN is a transformational approach to simplify branch office networking and optimizing performance. Our second guest speaker for today's webcast is Steve House, Vice President of Product Management at Zscaler. Steve is a seasoned product management leader with over 20 years of experience in networking and security industries. At Zscaler, Steve is responsible for driving product strategy and execution. And in this webcast, Steve will share best practices for securing your distributed enterprise leveraging cloud security and SD-WAN. In fact, Steve and Ramesh will also share a joint case study of their widely adopted solution at the end, so stay tuned. With that, it's my pleasure to hand it over to Ramesh. Ramesh, over to you. Thank you, Sajat, and uh, a warm welcome to everybody, uh, wherever you are in this globe. It's really exciting to see the networking industry go through this transformation, um, and one particular area of focus here is the wide area. Now, many of you are wondering what is SD-WAN and, and why is that important? And I, I cannot articulate this any better than an example that one of our customers actually went through. Um, CIO of a pretty large bank, uh, this was roughly last year, uh, 2015 summer, uh, a line of business reached out to the CIO and said, I have a brilliant idea to bring hundreds of millions of, of additional revenue. All you have to do is roll out high definition video to your branches. Uh, and, and the CIO thought, okay, that should not be so difficult. I'm able to stream high def video uh, to my home on a $50 circuit, so this should be possible, and he was pretty excited. And then he went down the path of researching into how to operationalize something like this. And very quickly found that A, the T1 lines that he is using at each one of these branches, skinny pipes cannot support high def video, and so started to look at bandwidth augmentation options, either increase the current bandwidth on the MPLS circuits, which comes at a cost, or completely transform the underlying network infrastructure and start to augment his private line connectivity with public infrastructures like broadband and, and internet. And in, interestingly, while going through that transformation is when uh, the customer embarked on the Office 365 journey and very quickly also realized that the network in the middle needs to be transformed to provide optimal user experience and security to SaaS applications. In a nutshell, that's really what SD-WAN is driving towards. There are lots of bells and whistles and lots of other use cases around it, but the transformation is around how do I architect my wide area so that I can ride the cloud strategy and at the same time get plenty of bandwidth for really low cost. And, and it's no surprise to us 
that some of the industry analysts here have have endorsed this and have said, uh, as, as you can see in the in the first uh, quote, about 30% of the enterprises will have this in 2019. And in the second one, uh, it's, it's going to be a multi-billion dollar uh, business. Now, before we get into the details of, of what is SD-WAN, what problem is it trying to solve, and how are we trying to solve it, I'm, I'm sure many of you are also wondering uh, who's with Tela. So, Steve, to the next slide. Uh, at a high level, we are a four-year-old uh, company uh, in the SD-WAN space um, with lots of uh, customer deployments. Um, 25 of the Fortune 500 customers have used the technology that we have built to radically transform their wide area network and realized the cloud-first, bandwidth-first, flexibility-first, agility-first type infrastructure. Uh, we are in over six continents, uh, and, and the interesting data point I'd like to provide is about 15,000 of these uh, devices and endpoints that are in production networks. For a technology that's really nascent, uh, that's only, I would say, about two, two and a half years since uh, uh, wide adoption, uh, it, this is really, really an interesting data point because there are customers who are betting their their wide area on a transformation technology like this, and this runs the gamut from retail to healthcare to financial uh, to, to many other industry verticals as well. Uh, we are also uh, heavily backed by the venture capitalists, and so we have roughly about 110 million in venture capital. The number itself is less significant. Uh, the percentage as it relates to overall funding that's gone into this industry, we have roughly about 55% of, of that funding. Now let's start to talk a little bit about uh, uh, SD-WAN in the, in the next slide uh, and, and what problems uh, are, is it really trying to solve. Uh, so going back to the example that I provided, the need to augment bandwidth going from private line to a combination of private and public infrastructure, uh, there are multiple things that need to be considered and, and also that come in the way. Um, the first thing is, is, is really around complex operations. So if you look at how the networking industry has, has typically evolved, it's been I have a branch, I have one or two MPLS circuits uh, that I provide to that branch, and the provider in the middle kind of takes care of all the connectivity. In this brave new world of software-defined everything, there is a interesting dynamic between uh, the provider and the enterprise on who has control uh, and, and who needs to be able to make these decisions. Ultimately, it could be the provider that's providing a managed service to enable all of that, uh, but operations become an interesting topic of, of conversation. Uh, also, as you start to move from purely private infrastructures to a combination of private and public, security is absolutely, absolutely a concern. Uh, and, and the reason for that is think of a, of a large retailer, for example, that has thousands of sites. Uh, the minute you move from all private to uh, private and public, you have multiple points in the network that are exposed. And typically that's not good for anything that's transactional traffic, anything that's considered sensitive, critical traffic, and, and so forth. And so security absolutely needs to be thought about. And, and that's really the topic of today's conversation here. As the industry is going through this transformation to a hybrid model where you have private MPLS, public internet, it could be cable, DSL, and 4G, LTE, and so forth, how do I bring security into the mix and how do I consume the security aspects of it as well? And so that's when, when we started to talk to enterprise customers about, about this transformation, one of the things that absolutely keeps coming up multiple times and multiple customers have actually deployed this as well now is around cloud security. How do I shut all the holes that I have in my network have just a few points into a Zscaler infrastructure and then exit out to the internet or content or SaaS-based applications as well. And so that really brings everything together and completes the, the HD-WAN story as well. Another interesting uh, thing that multiple customers have, have always been looking for but have never gotten out of their wide area is application awareness. Uh, you would like to know uh, how much of your traffic is going towards your critical applications like ERP, CRM, and so forth, and how much of that traffic is really going towards cat videos on YouTube. 
And so uh, typically policies are put at the application level without really considering the, the impact that it has on the network. And QoS has been the tool of choice to provide this level of application uh, control and, and, and also policy control as well. And in this brave new world of software-defined everything, customers are looking for uh, finer control so that they can exactly pinpoint this is the application that I need to protect, these are the applications that I, know I don't need to care about. And so many of the challenges that you see today are around operations, around scale, around security, around application awareness, and then finally around cloud as well. I'll touch on the topic of cloud in a good amount of detail. Uh, so let me start to talk about how this problem can be addressed architecturally first in the next slide. So if you really look at the solution, and then I would highly encourage you to do your research on, on, on SD-WAN and what it can bring to the table. But to us, as, as we started to develop the solution in a clean, with a clean piece of paper, here were some of the, the things that, that we considered. First, at the root of it, what you need is a completely transport independent fabric. What I mean by that is it, it's not enough to have a site that's dual connected, one to MPLS and one to broadband, but I could have sites that are only on broadband. I could have sites only on MPLS. I could have sites that are just hanging off of just an LTE connection. How do I make sure that all these sites talk to each other securely? And at the same time, how do I make sure that when they have to go from those sites to the internet and so forth, all of these things can be consumed in, in a really simple way. And that's really what brings us to the delivery platform, which is a combination of things that you're traditionally used to with respect to routing, security, and so forth, uh, QoS, multicast, and at the same time bringing in important elements of security into the mix. And security comes in multiple different forms and shapes. We'll, we'll talk a lot about uh, cloud-based security with, uh, with, with Zscaler, uh, securing the perimeter as well in your, in your enterprise. Another element of, of security here is really around segmentation. Uh, how do I segment my network? Today, data centers are typically segmented through VLANs. I have different lines of business. I have different applications that are on different uh, um, security groups and so forth. But typically, the wide area and the branches are, are not as, as well segmented. Um, there's an enormous amount of interest in creating the segmentation end-to-end -end so that I can delineate um, different types of lines of business, brands, and so forth, and at the same time, I can keep the attack vectors pretty small as well. And so those are some of the things that really come into the picture uh, as you start to talk about sd and, and context of security in particular. Uh, there are a few elements around uh, cloud as well especially as you start to access infrastructure as a service and SaaS applications, how do I bring all these things uh, together? And we'll talk a little bit about that in, in, in subsequent slides as well. Uh, all of these things have to be consumed using a single pane of glass. And so in this, again, brave new world of software-defined everything, it is about access to information. It is about one-click provisioning. It is about how do I do things in, in the most simplest way without having to send uh, skilled field technicians out on site to, to fix problems. How can I do that in, in a centralized way and so forth? That's really what is the underlying guts of the, of the solution that we provide. Uh, now, moving on to the next slide, let me talk a little bit about the components uh, that constitute the, the solution. We talked about the philosophy, we talked about the various things that need to go into the platform. Uh, what really needs to be built um, and, and, and delivered now? Um, there are fundamentally two components to the WebTela solution. Uh, one is the what we call as the VH router. These are, think of them as physical or virtual uh, appliances that sit at the edge of the network. Uh, the edge here could be your branch, your data center, your campus, uh, and you can actually extend this into infrastructure as a service, AWS, Azure, and, and so forth as well. All of the connectivity between those sites are purely uh, between themselves. So if I have a user at a branch trying to access an application inside my data center, the traffic flows freely between those two. The network-wide intelligence, the network-wide connectivity policy, uh, and visibility, all of that is, is provided uh, by this centralized controller and management infrastructure that we call as the WebTela Cloud. So it's really these two elements that you can use to build a large-scale uh, infrastructure. 
And there are multiple customers. Uh, there's a very large retailer with about uh, 1,400 sites uh, that has radically transformed their network already using this type of an infrastructure. And so they just have a few of these contro controllers at strategic locations, one in APAC, one in EMEA, one, and a couple of them in the US, uh, and they're able to control their wide area infrastructure, a global footprint uh, using that. Uh, another large bank, uh, roughly about uh, 3,000 sites, uh, has done exactly the same thing. Uh, brought in multiple transports, uh, MPLS and broadband and 4G LTE into the mix, and they're able to get all of the application visibility and, and infrastructure as well built using that. So now let's talk a little bit about cloud, uh, and that's an important topic of, of conversation for multiple customers uh, in, 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 the, in the next slide. So if you look at cloud in particular, there are uh, two elements, uh, and, and this is not new news. Uh, this is how the evolution has happened. Uh, one is infrastructure as a service that you see around uh, applications that are built in AWS and Azure and, and so forth. So how do I access those? How do I make the cloud part of my wide area? That's one topic of, of conversation. And uh, traditionally, this has been a challenge for many uh, enterprises. Uh, what we have done is actually we have instantiated an instance of our VEdge essentially inside of the public cloud so that you can naturally just extend your secure overlay fabric all the way up to up to cloud as well. So that helps with applications that are homegrown, applications that you have built yourself as well. Now comes the question of, of staff, uh, especially applications like Office 365 and, and Salesforce.com and, and so forth. How do I access these applications? Yeah, and I have a few things to worry about here. Do I need to aggregate them at my DMZ and then exit out uh, to access the application? And if the distance between those two are pretty large, then I do have suboptimal user experience to worry about. Or do I regionally aggregate and then exit out to the internet? Or do I have to go by what the, the O365 guys are saying, which is, hey, just exit out directly at the branch and access, uh, access the cloud. So the answer really depends on where you are in the globe and, and how quickly can you access and what the latencies are and so forth. But there is a fundamental element of security uh, that needs to be thought about. And that's a perfect segue into the, into the uh, next few slides. Uh, over to you, Steve. Thank you, Ramesh. Um, yeah, that, that was an, an excellent segue into talking about Zscaler, which provides a cloud security platform. Before we go into the details, I thought I'd give a quick introduction to who Zscaler is and tell you a little bit about us. On the technology side, we have been around for a number of years and have over 80 patents filed. A good chunk of those have been granted already. We have a worldwide footprint with over 100 data centers now blocking over 105 million threats every single day. And we're completing over 25 billion transactions through us every single working day. So that shows the scale that we've been able to achieve by being the gateway to the internet for over 5,000 customers, including a significant portion in the Fortune 500. We have over 15 million users going through our service every day, coming from over 185 countries around the world. We've been recognized by Gartner and Forrester as leaders in providing secure internet access, and we have a network of global partners that can help deliver our service and service our customers. From a financial standpoint, we have a very strong track record of having a over 100% renewal rate. What that means is when a contract comes up for renewal, customers not only rebuy the service, they typically either add more users or add more services onto their existing subscriptions. So that goes to show that our customers like our service and are loyal to us. And from a funding standpoint, uh, last year we took a round from Google Capital and PPG to really solidify us and bring us into our next phase of growth here at Zscaler. 
When the name Zscaler came about, it originally stood for Zenith of Scalability. The entire concept was for us to be successful, we have to be able to scale to the breadth of the largest companies in the world. The vision is that there'll be a billion connected devices. All of those need security. We need to build a system that could take every one of those onto us. And over the last few years, we've really proven that to be the case. We measure scalability across a number of different axes. The first one we'll talk about here is countries. I mentioned 185 countries. Our, our largest customer in terms of locations is British American Tobacco with over uh, with 185 different countries that they do business in. The second axis is pure locations. And there, uh, the Mormon Church has over 30,000 meeting houses directing their traffic to us, and Edward Jones, GameStop, very large organizations in financial services, retail, human resources, healthcare, et cetera, with lots and lots of sites around the world. And the, the last axis is around number of users. If we scale to some of the largest enterprises in the world like General Electric, Barclays, Procter & Gamble, Siemens, Nestle, Shell, Exxon, the list goes on and on. A couple at the top I'll point out, one is uh, the National Health Service has over 1.6 million employees. It's about the fifth largest employer in the world. All of the hospitals, clinics, et cetera, in all of the United Kingdom. MCNC is the education network in North Carolina with predominantly students, but over 1.3 million students. In fact, MCNC pumps over 45 gigabits per second through us on a school day. Right now, it's still the end of the summer, but that'll be ramping back up. That is a significant amount of traffic going into our cloud. So when people ask us, oh, I've got, you know, five gigabits per second and 100,000 users, can you handle us? It's like we won't even feel that. We have built this cloud to scale in a massive way. I mentioned the analysts just to show a little bit. We have now for six years in a row been in the leaders quadrant of Gartner. If you go back about three years, there were five dots in the leaders quadrant. Three of them have moved out into the challengers and there's down to two that are left. We are seen as the most visionary if you measure that by the distance to the right, and that's because the world, including Gartner, believes that the future is delivering security as a cloud service, and that's why they put us at the top of the visionary uh, list. And then Forrester, they've done a wave not just on Secure Web Gateway and all of the functions there, but specific to delivering security as a service. And when you look at it that way, Zscaler is far and away the highest and the most right, as well as the largest dot in terms of market presence. While some of those vendors in the Gartner Magic Quadrant might do more revenue than Zscaler, no one does nearly as much revenue, customers, traffic, any metric you want to do through a cloud security service as Zscaler. So we're far and away the leader in cloud delivered security. Now we'll shift gears into why that's really important. You heard a lot about what Ramesh talked about earlier in terms of transforming the network into this world of cloud and that really does open up a new set of challenges around new attack vectors, uh, potentially around appliance sprawl if you have to get appliances out to directly connected branches because you need to add security there, and how do you ease adoption of these cloud-based applications to both improve productivity and speed to revenue and provide a better user experience. So when you think through those challenges, you have to take into account what you should be doing with security. If you look at the typical way that a large enterprise would build a, a internet egress point security system, there is a number of different appliances that 
your traffic might flow through. Everything from a secure web gateway to a sandbox to a DLP system, an SSL inspection device, a next generation firewall, load balancers, uh, et cetera. This is a, a real drawing from a, a customer, a Fortune 100 bank, and they counted 28 hops going out and then back into their network through their internet egress point. And this by itself was very complex, costly, hard to manage, and each one of those devices added a little bit of latency, and if there was any problem, let's say one of the devices got overloaded, one of them had a bug, one of them turned on a feature that brought down the, the throughput, you had to spend a lot of time troubleshooting that and trying to figure out what might be wrong, where do I need to buy more appliances. Every time you turned on a new SaaS application, you now have more traffic going through this gateway and you have a potential to have to upgrade one or multiple of these stacks. And when you think about this move to the cloud where you want to directly connect your users to the internet to improve their performance, save money, then you have the real challenge of could I possibly replicate this stack instead of five regional data centers at 100 or 1,000 branch offices, and that's just not practical, it's not realistic. And that's where a cloud-based security solution really comes into play and becomes the natural place to do security. We'll talk through a little bit of this as we go, but you can provide better overall security in a much simpler manner that is really all about enabling that transformation, that move to the cloud. In our mind, this is inevitable. The same thing that happened in multiple other markets, for instance, the, the CRM market with Salesforce, where you go forward five years and you, you hardly see anybody using the, the old on-premise style. That shift is natural and is gonna happen with security as well. And if you think about the, the list of customers already using Zscaler, that shift is well underway. It's not the future, it's, it's the today. The way that we've done this is by providing your entire security stack as a cloud service. We've essentially put a perimeter around the internet. So no matter where your employees are, they go through Zscaler before they get to their internet resources, their SaaS applications, et cetera. To do this, you just point your router or local firewall to Zscaler via a GRE or IPsec tunnel or you uh, use the Zscaler app to protect your users when they're not in one of your buildings. So they go to a coffee shop, they're working from home, they still get the same protections that they got when they're in the office. With the cloud-based security solution, there's only one place you configure policies. You do it once by user group, location, time of day, application URL category, whatever it might be, you configure those policies and they are instantly deployed across the entire cloud. So if a user leaves and goes to another country, they're directed to the closest data center and they get their policy automatically and instantly. And then from a reporting and visibility, as soon as a flow happens, that for an entire organization is collected within seconds into your log database, we call that Nanolog, and available to do reporting and even stream onto your premise into a SIM like a Splunk or an ARC site, et cetera. So you get instant visibility from every user around the world. There's no process of collecting logs, loading those in, merging them together, it all happens in real time within seconds of that transaction happening. And Zscaler was built from the ground up to be a cloud security platform. As I mentioned before, over 100 data centers, 25 billion transactions every single day. We have over 100,000 security updates that get propagated 
throughout our cloud every single day. Those are things that our research team finds. It's things that our sandbox detonate and find to be malicious. But we also have third-party feeds from over 40 companies like Google, Fish Tank, Microsoft, Adobe, et cetera, where if anybody out there is finding things as malicious, you are instantly protected across our entire network. On top of that platform, we layer a number of different services. Zscaler started out in 2008 with a secure web gateway that was URL filtering and antivirus. But over the years, in that same platform with the same architecture, has added in next generation outbound firewall. So you don't need to put a firewall out at the branch when you directly connect it. We've added cloud sandboxing. So every file that has never been seen before will get sent into the sandbox and protect the entire cloud if it turns out to be malicious. We've added data leakage protection, QoS, cloud application security brokerage functionality. So we've continued to build on this single platform in a way that a traditional appliance vendor would typically do by adding different appliances with different user interfaces and reporting and different training that's needed. Here, it's all a single integrated platform. And focusing in a little bit on the security, what really sets Zscaler apart are a few things. First, we don't make trade-offs. We inspect every file that comes through our network. We don't say, oh, this is from a trusted site, no reason to scan it, or this is from a CDN, it's probably safe. We scan every file. If it's never been seen before, we'll send it into our sandbox. And we do that because while it's usually safe, sometimes good sites do get breached and they serve a piece of malware. More and more, the criminals are using content distribution networks to host their malware. So anytime you're bypassing something because it's probably safe, you're leaving yourself open for compromise. We also do a real-time threat correlation. All of our different modules are tied together so we can see exactly what's happening and quickly block destinations, similar uh, signatures, the exact file if it shows up on another site, et cetera. And we have that cloud intelligence where any one of our users gets uh, find something the first time, we instantly protect for the other 15 million users on our system. And we have settings where even a zero-day uh, exploit that's never been seen by anyone that could be targeted specifically for you, created so it's not in any hash or known place, you can put a policy that says, if I'm going to download an executable, if it's never been, support, uh, never been seen before anywhere by any of our users, we're going to do something called quarantine it where we'll put up a page that says, come back in a few minutes, we're scanning that file. You would never do that for Word docs or PDFs or other things that are frequently changing and usually safe, but if someone's downloading an executable and you allow it, maybe it's your IT group, and nobody in our cloud has ever seen it, you're going to want to quarantine that, put it in the sandbox, and analyze it first. That's a unique capability. If you scale or no one else can do it. And then finally, I mentioned already, we have a, a fantastic research team, but we don't count on just our own team. We have over 40 different feeds, like some of the ones you see, like Virus Total, et cetera, where we are taking the collection of, of brains around the world, and if they found something to be bad, we integrate it into our cloud and instantly propagate it to all of our users. Most of our customers start with Zscaler in either step one or step two here, but we like to say it's a journey. The ultimate goal of many of our customers is to get to that fully transformed network. That was what Ramesh was talking about earlier. They want to directly connect their branches to the Internet in a safe way to enable more throughput, better performance, and savings on things like MPLS, 
But the first step is often to just point your existing infrastructure to Zscaler. We add an extra layer there. We prove out that we provide security not only as well as them, but better than the existing solutions. And then you start to simplify your environment. You rip out some of those appliances that are just adding cost and complexity to where you have a uh, an appliance with architecture, and then when you're ready to move a site directly to an internet connection, security doesn't change. You've already got the policies in place. It doesn't matter whether they came from a hub and spoke internet egress point or directly from a branch because the policies are the same. So once you've done one, <clears throat> it's easy to move to number two and number three because your security is already in place. So why Zscaler? It depends on who you ask. If you're asking the CISO, it's because we can provide unmatched security with a consistent policy for every user that's always up to date, always patched. If you acquire a new company, you can instantly get them on the exact same security as the rest of the organization. If you're on talking to a CTO or a head of IT, it's about IT simplification, consolidating a bunch of point products into one, and really enabling that uh, adoption of cloud. If you're a CIO, CFO, it's about eliminating some of that CapEx, turning it into operating expense, lowering your uh, operating expenses on MPLS, so you can take a big chunk out. Often you can pay for an entire Zscaler deployment and more with the reduction in MPLS costs. And finally, from an end user perspective, it's about faster response time. If you're directly breaking out, you are closer to those resources. You can get out to the internet right away. If you're an international company, you can get localized content. You don't have to get whatever content your internet egress point is. And uh, it really does enable a smooth transition to SaaS applications, et cetera. And with that, I will turn it back over to Ramesh to talk through a joint customer success story. This is a customer using both Viptela and Zscaler. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, so just to bring uh, both elements together here, uh, both SD-WAN and security, let, let's use a frame of reference here, which is really this picture. Uh, and as, as Steve was mentioning, we do have multiple customers, uh, large enterprises who have already deployed uh, this infrastructure. Uh, but typically, this is kind of what that architecture would look like at a very high level. Uh, you have, at the bottom, you have your, your home offices, your small retail locations, your branches, campus data centers, cloud-based locations, and, and so forth. Um, all the traffic kind of flows freely between them if it is site-to-site uh, -site or a user trying to access an application uh, directly inside the data center and, and whatnot. Uh, the minute you have to inspect something, and you could put a policy that says, I want to inspect everything, then there is a dynamic decision that's made to send traffic securely to the Zscaler cloud at the top. Uh, and multiple customers have used this in, in, in multiple ways. Um, it could be just purely for content. It could be for all your enterprise critical applications, uh, a mix of the, of the two, and also uh, SaaS as well. And so the decision to enter uh, Zscaler through the internet or through some kind of a, of a secure pipe is uh, entirely controlled through the mechanism that we provide inside of our platform. Um, you could decide, hey, I want to inspect all port 80 and port 443 traffic only to begin with. Um, and so that's an application finer grain control that, that you could have. Or you could say, I want to inspect every everything. You could also have full control over what elements of security you want to control from within the, the Zscaler uh, dashboard as well. So the decision on 
what needs to make, go to the to the Zscaler cloud uh, and how it needs to go is controlled through the Viptela infrastructure. And the decision on what needs to be inspected and all of the uh, threat protection capabilities that Zscaler provides is actually controlled using the, the Zscaler infrastructure. So that at a high level is how the customers have been able to pull both of these things together. Now, in order to enable this and, and deploy this, it's actually very, very simple. Um, all you have to do is, as, as, as Steve was mentioning, uh, put all of the policies in place on the Zscaler cloud for the applications of interest. Then go to the Webtela portal and say, these are the sites, these are the applications, go to Zscaler. And it's really that simple. Uh, there is an automatic tunnel that gets established between our devices into the Zscaler cloud, and we can actually start sending traffic right away. And so the, if you're talking about time to capability, if you're talking about enforcing policies really quickly, this is really um, uh, the, the core of, of what we do. Now, this is, again, an architecture. Now, let's talk about this in the context of a specific customer in the next slide. And uh, the customer is, is a Fortune 500 healthcare equipment uh, company. Uh, they did a recent uh, owner presentation as well. Uh, the company is Agilent, uh, have 100-plus uh, locations worldwide, uh, extremely stringent from a regulatory compliance and, uh, and, and, and security standpoint. Um, and they have uh, employees that are, that are global, pretty large company. So you can imagine it's an intersection of of uh, healthcare equipment, uh, security uh, constraint, uh, highly regulated, and, and they need to make something work. And, and, uh, and the journey that they embarked on was, was really around uh, having a network with uh, pure MPLS and how do you augment that with a broadband-based offering for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, sites that need to be turned on quickly, uh, access to high amounts of bandwidth uh, that, that's economical, uh, and also reach as well. Uh, how, how do you architect the network so that you, you get the most optimal uh, performance uh, for, for the network? Um, and because there is a broadband connection at every single uh, site and, and, and location, the natural tendency was to look at, okay, can I uh, exit out to the internet locally at the branch and get the most optimal performance as well. And all of the, the centralized uh, uh, security functions uh, I, I, along with all of the firewalling, the, the IPS, IDS, URL filtering, and many of the other uh, elements of security that, that Steve was talking about. So they were looking at it uh, in combination. And, and, the, and the transformation was really around moving from private to hybrid. And as a result of that, having full uh, control over the infrastructure and still realize the benefits of cost, realize the benefits of time to capability, uh, and also all of the elements of security. And what we demonstrated uh, in their, uh, first in their labs, then in their pilot sites, uh, and soon in the production network uh, was exactly that. Uh, how do you architect the network, make it really, really simple so that all you have to think about are sites, all you have to think about are size of the site, how many connections do I have uh, in terms of uh, uh, private and, and, and public, and how do I access security? And so the conversation uh, was, was really around network architecture and also policies very quickly, which is really where you want to be as, as you start to architect this, this, this type of an infrastructure. Uh, some of the, the key elements uh, that, that stood out were really around DPI-based policies, right? So uh, at the site, uh, the Viptela infrastructure can give you finer uh, application control, so you can say these are the applications of, uh, that are of interest, and please send this to the Zscaler Cloud for inspection and for outbound uh, processing as well, and do the same thing in the, in the reverse direction. And, and so the conversation then started to gravitate from IP addresses and ports and DSCPs to these are the applications that I really want to consider and, and, and I want to protect and, and I want to enforce policies around as well. Uh, the other element is everything is centrally controlled and cloud controlled. Um, so Steve was talking about uh, the power of cloud-based security 
security. And the infrastructure that we provide in, at, at Webtella is also entirely cloud-based as well. So the, the controls that we provide, the management platform that we provide are entirely cloud-based. And so you can consume this technology as well really simply. You do not have to involve your IT infrastructure for integration, for management, and, and so forth. You can actually almost instantly turn it on and, and start to consume as well. And, and the same thing is, is applicable irrespective of the type of content, whether it's uh, for internet-bound content, for SaaS, for, um, for um, guest Wi-Fi, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, this architecture we know works. It scales uh, to uh, not just a few hundred locations, but uh, thousands of, of like, locations worldwide as well. And it gives you the peace of mind. It gives you the high availability required as well. Uh, interesting, the few data points that, that came about as a, as a result of this uh, were the performance uh, for some of the elements of voice are better on internet as opposed to just a pure private network, uh, which actually caught us by surprise as well. Um, a few other things are the high availability of the solution because now you're breaking this into smaller chunks and you're providing redundancy for every single one of those components. The overall high availability of the solution grows dramatically. Uh, and you do get dual redundancy for all of the components of the solution, whether it's for site-level redundancy, whether it's for access into Zscaler, and certainly all elements of cloud inside of Zscaler are, are already redundant. And so it helps with your, with your cost. This helps with your time to capability, helps with your security, and, uh, and essentially you're moving in the direction of cloudifying everything as well. So there are a lot more details behind uh, not just this case study, but multiple other customers that we have jointly deployed together. Uh, I would highly encourage the attendees and, and the audience to reach out to us and, uh, and, and learn more, uh, and we'll certainly be happy to provide a demonstration of that as well. So with that, I'll uh, turn this over to, to Sajaj as well. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you very much. I think so. That was a great case study, and uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, our audience can actually relate to a lot of challenges, uh, you know, with a with a current or a traditional uh, appliance-based model. I think so. SD WAN and cloud security is a is a very deadly combination, and that's something that everyone should consider as they move forward. Um, so. Uh, to our audience, we are moving on to our next segment, which is the Q&A. At this time, you can type in your questions in the chat panel or the Q&A panel. We'll compile them, and you know, I'll have Steve and Ramesh help me answering those questions. But before that, we would really want to, uh, you know, cover some of our next steps. Uh, you know, what you see on your screen right now is a is a free security health check. Uh, you can run a quick and safe security test with Zscaler. The link is right there on your screen. We are not going to uh, download. It's, it's completely safe. Uh, there's not going to be any you know, virus that's going to be downloaded on your machine. And within less than two minutes, um, you'll actually be able to see a report, uh, and it'll give you a detailed uh, you know, analysis of your security posture. You can, you're more than welcome to get back to us if you want to share the results and for the next steps. Uh, next slide. Uh, can you, yeah, thank you. And a couple of other things, you know, uh, for the next steps before we get into the Q&A. Uh, from Zscaler, there are a couple of webinars. Uh, you know, we have our upcoming live webcast on Rio Olympics 2016 on August the 25th on Thursday. Uh, we'll definitely follow up with a link for you guys to register. Uh, so please stay tuned. And we also do these live product demos weekly. Our next a couple of demos are scheduled for August 25th and September 1. And on Webtella side, they also do a bunch of these live webinars and product demos. Uh, the upcoming one is on August the 30th on optimizing the WAN for AWS and Azure. Uh, and there, uh, there is a link for all their upcoming live demos as well. So with that, uh, let's move on to our Q&A section. Uh, Ramesh, I have first question for you. Uh, the question is, do I need to rip and replace the current security, current Cisco infrastructure to accommodate SD-WAN? That's a, that's a great question, and it's actually a question that comes up uh, quite often from our, from our customers uh, that are looking at this technology. Uh, the short answer is you can deploy this in, in one of uh, two ways, right? Uh, for the 
ultra conservative uh, slash uh, you, you want to kick the, the kick the tires and, and understand how things work you can put a Viptela device behind your existing uh, van router at which point we would we would be the van router we would do all of the elements of, of path management we would automatically uh, measure loss latency jitter do the application steering provide the network based uh, security and so the van router in the in the front would just be no more than a transport device. What we have seen though is vast majority of the customers go ahead and replace the van router um, because we do provide all of the routed capabilities. We are a van router as well. So they go ahead and, and rip and replace. Uh, it, it's not that you have to uh, because we fully understand that for a period of time, especially if your network is pretty large, you will have to exist, coexist with, uh, with other equipment uh, vendors. So we certainly can interoperate and that's the model we would uh, we would recommend as well um, but uh, the the short of it is the end state architecture what we have seen in in vast majority of the customers uh, is, uh, is 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 all Victella. great thank you uh, there's a follow up question on your last slide ramesh um, it said something about dual redundancy everywhere meaning dual Victella devices um, at each location is that correct yeah, so um, we, we have seen a mixed bag in terms of uh, deployment models. In, in retail in particular, we have seen a single device. Uh, it could be for cost reasons. It could be for, uh, for multiple of other reasons. Um, so there's a single, a single device that's dual connected to multiple, uh, to, to, to circuits essentially, um, either dual broadband or MPLS and, and broadband and so forth. Uh, what we have seen in healthcare and financials and, uh, and government uh, is, is a fully redundant deployment where you do have uh, devices, multiple devices at a site, uh, and you can terminate different circuits on each of those uh, devices. Uh, we, in, in the technology, we can automatically figure out uh, what the available circuits are across multiple devices and optimally use them as well. Great. Uh, I have next, next question for Steve. Uh, Steve, the question is, will the Zscaler Vitella solution work if the customer wants to use MPLS and broadband as the overlay network? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's, for, from a Zscaler perspective, that's transparent. The traffic destined for the public internet would go through the Zscaler service. So any uh, SaaS applications, public websites, et cetera. And Ramesh can comment on this as well, but the Tela can absolutely work with the MPLS and uh, using broadband at the same time as part of a, either a transition or a, a strategy to reduce costs and or improve performance. That, that is great. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, sorry for that, Ramesh. Uh, next question, Steve. Uh, I think that this is a follow-up to one of your slides, and the question is, how is it securely transferred to Zscaler that part is always breezed over, proxy doesn't seem secure, and DMVPN or easy VPN tunnels are not specified. How does it work with Viptela? Yeah, again, I'll start and I'll turn it over to Ramesh. So the way we philosophically look at it as if the traffic, again, it's destined to a public site, it's either SSL or HTTP, if it's SSL, it's already encrypted, so you're going to a SaaS application or Gmail or YouTube now, Facebook, many, many sites use SSL, so that has its own tunnel with encryption, et cetera. Uh, if it's a regular non-encrypted site, then you know, if someone's going to CNN, we don't encrypt it between the user and us because it would just be in the clear from us to CNN anyway. Uh, I say that we do optionally support IPsec encryption where you can encrypt everything, but that's not a recommended deployment. It's not something that we see as necessary, but it is supported if somebody would like to do that. But the, as I said, the, the non-private traffic doesn't need to be encrypted. For internal based traffic, that wouldn't typically go through us and that's you know, Viptela would just handle that, and Ramesh can comment on the, the way that that traffic is secured. Yeah, that, that's right, Steve, and, and, and you covered it well. So if, if you really look at, uh, look at it, there are uh, two traffic types. One is the site-to-site um, -site, um, or, or, or app, uh, consumer-to-application. -to 
uh, and, and that typically goes uh, directly. And, and the Viptela infrastructure provides the full-blown security, network security, whereby we can encrypt everything going between a, a pair of sites automatically. Um, and for traffic destined uh, outbound through Zscaler, um, we automatically set up a, a pair of uh, uh, redundant uh, GRE tunnels, uh, run Keep Alive inside, and we can, um, through some of the the integration work, uh, send traffic directly over uh, one of the, the, the GRE tunnels, uh, and, and that takes care of uh, sending it out to the, to the internet or, or a content site on the way back again, which would use the same uh, GRE tunnel uh, back to here. Uh, the control over what application needs to go through that GRE tunnel uh, it can be done through the, uh, the Viptela vManage platform. So you can say these are the applications of interest, and this is what needs to go through the GRE tunnel. Okay, uh, Ramesh, next question is for you. Uh, can you review what hardware and software is required at the headquarters end, and what hardware and software is needed at the remote site? Sure, um, so we have just, in terms of simplicity, we just have uh, a few flavors of, of hardware. Um, so we have 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig type encryption uh, devices that are also um, serving the, the full function of, of, of routing, path management, and, and so forth. So think of it as, as a WAN router uh, that you can put at the a head end. And we really don't delineate between a site and a head end. We advocate a full mesh model uh, because in, the, in this brave new world, everybody wants to talk to everyone, and so you need to kind of have that, that full mesh connectivity. Um, so uh, think of it as you size the application, you size the device based on the site that you have, uh, and that can be either a physical or, or a virtual device. And then all of the underlying elements are controlled using a, a cloud-based infrastructure. And, uh, and that can be either in the Viptela cloud, it can be in a managed service provider uh, cloud, or it can be on-prem uh, as well if, if you're a highly regulated industry. Um, so those are really the two components. Uh, think of it as, as the, co the cloud components that help with the network-wide uh, connectivity, intelligence, and management, and then the actual devices that do all of the heavy lifting with sending packets and so forth. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question is, I think, for both of you, and maybe Ramesh, you can start, and then Steve can add on. With Viptela and Zscaler integration, is there a GRE tunnel or IPsec tunnel between Viptela branch devices and Zscaler cloud? Yeah, uh, I think we, we covered this uh, in, the, in the previous question. Yes, there is a GRE tunnel. That's the on-ramp uh, from the enterprise branch into the into the Zscaler cloud, uh, and so. Uh, it, it, it is configured through uh, a very simple few clicks on uh, on vManage, and uh, this would automatically set up a GI tunnel. And for liveliness detection, we do run Keep Alive inside so that um, the traffic can move over to the other GRE tunnel that's automatically set up uh, in case there is a, a, a failure. Uh, Steve, do you want to add anything? No, I think that covered it. All right, awesome. I think uh, I'm getting a lot of questions on whether the presentation is going to be available on demand. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we'll definitely make the presentation available on demand, as well as we'll follow with a link to the, uh, to the recorded version, and we'll also share the copy of the presentation with you guys as well. Uh, I think uh, we have time to take one or two more questions. Um, Steve, the next one is for you. How do you ensure performance or stability for a SD line in comparison with an MPLS line where you have a fixed route managed by one vendor? I think there's more with Ramesh, but I think so there's another question, a follow-up question on performance, performance and stability with a Zscaler cloud also. Yeah, I'll let Ramesh take the, the first half of that question because uh, the internal traffic doesn't go through Zscaler, so that's really uh, a question for the Viptela side. In terms of our performance and stability, uh, first of all, we wouldn't be able to have the likes of the customers that we do in terms of Fortune 500 using us for their entire internet if we weren't stable enough because the internet is a mission critical part of so many businesses right now. From a performance standpoint, I mentioned earlier we're in over 100 data centers. That means we're close to wherever the locations might be so that the traffic uh, doesn't have to travel far. We peer directly with all the major service providers around the world, which means the traffic gets from your location onto us in a single hop through your service provider. And we 
even here directly with a large percentage of the major content providers out on the internet, people like Microsoft if you're running Office 365. That means you can one hop get to us to provide the security and we can directly go from us into the content providers without ever crossing the quote public internet part. It's all a very well-known path into it. You know, obviously, if you're a smaller site in a random uh, server around the world, there are some unknowns, but that's always going to be the case. What we do is we ensure the performance to the major service providers, the major content providers are all a single hop with very high speed, low latency connections. So Ramesh, maybe you can comment on the first part of that question. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think performance is a pretty broad topic, but I can touch on a couple of things and then certainly have an offline uh, conversation with, uh, uh, with the person that asked the question as well. Um, so with respect to, with respect to performance, a few things that you need to consider. If you have multiple uh, circuits, different types of connections, what you would want to know is what is the SLA I can possibly get over those? Um, there is a, a, a provider provided SLA, um, which uh, is, is usually in, in a contract. Uh, and then there is the real time SLA that you can realize uh, on the network itself. Right? It could be that it is a, a four nines available network, but the instant that you're looking at it, uh, it is going through a blackout or, or a brownout. So what you need is the ability to steer around those, those things, right? And we have developed enough uh, in the solution uh, and in the capabilities so that you can automatically not just get visibility into what the underlying SLA is for each of the circuits that you are using. And uh, this is any site to any site. So it could be from branch to data center, branch to cloud branch to other sites. I'll know instantly what those SLAs look like. And I can make decisions in real time on which application needs to take what type of an SLA. Um, many of our customers uh, have, have put policies in there that say, hey, this is my WebEx, this is my critical application, uh, and I need to get a near zero loss and a less than 100 millisecond path through the network. And that's an example of a centralized policy. Now, this gets instantiated on every single device which measures in real time and steers application traffic down a path that will provide that level of performance SLA. Uh, and so once again, this is a pretty broad, broad topic, but uh, uh, that's one of the ways that you can actually make sure that your applications get the performance SLA that, that you're looking for. Great, thank you, Ramesh, and thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks for this compelling uh, presentation. At this time, I would like to now compute this webcast. Uh, we've got a ton of questions, and uh, we're sorry if we were not able to get through to your questions, but we'll make sure that Zskiller and Victella team will get back to you, uh, you know, and help you individually uh, answering those questions that you may have. Um, so, and I would also like to thank our wonderful audience for uh, taking our time from their busy schedule and spend the last hour with us. I hope you enjoyed the webcast. Uh, please do give us your feedback before leaving. Uh, and you all have a great day or the evening and hope to see you in our future presentations. Uh, bye for now. And thank you, Steve. Thanks, Ramesh. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.